What's up everybody, my name is Moss Norman and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to write a multi-threaded program in C. I thought it was time to do a follow-up video from my uh, previous video on multi-threading, introducing you to the concept. It's now time to see a concrete example of multi-threading. And in order to write our multi-threaded C program, we're gonna make use of a library called pthreads. pthreads is short for POSIX threads. The pthreads library offers an interface through which you can create, update, and destroy threads in a program. And as we write our code, I'll explain the basic functions that you uh, call from the pthreads library. So with that, if you haven't already, grab a coffee and let's get coding. Okay, so I have my editor opened. I'm using uh, Atom to uh, make this program, but you can use whatever editor you prefer. Uh, I've created a new file and I've called it mt-example.c. And this is gonna be our, uh, our multi-threaded program. And the first thing that we need to add in the program is we need to uh, link the necessary libraries. So the first one that we're gonna add is uh, standard input output. Then we're gonna link the standard library. We're also gonna link uh, the uh, library to interface with the, uh, the POSIX uh, API. And then we'll, we'll also link the pthread library. Okay, so the pthread library is, is the library that gives us, provides an interface for interacting, creating, and destroying new, uh, new pthreads. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a main function. And inside of that main function, we're gonna declare a new variable called TID0, and it's of data type pthread underscore T. And that data type is, uh, is something that's provided by the pthreads interface, and it's to uniquely identify a, uh, a, a thread. So this is actually just gonna be a, a large uh, integer, basically. And it's gonna uniquely identify the thread that we're about to create. Uh, after we've declared this uh, variable, we can then call the pthread create function. And the pthread create function is what's actually going to initialize a new thread. And it takes several arguments. And the first argument is the address to the variable that we just declared, TID0. And it's going to come up with a new ID and it's going to assign that uh, new ID to this TID0 uh, variable. So we pass in the address of that declared variable, and then in the the second uh, parameter to the pthread create function, the second parameter is a data structure of attributes that you can assign to the new thread that you're creating. And these attributes describe the, pe the behavior uh, of that thread and how it's going to behave and what it can do and what it can't do. For instance, a thread can be uh, can be made not joinable. So basically that means that its life cycle is not going to be dependent on the on the life cycle of the main uh, program, of the thread running this main function. So it will have an independent life cycle. Uh, in this case, we're going to use null. So we're not gonna pass in any, any attributes. Uh, we're just gonna keep the default, uh, the default behavior uh, when we create this thread. And then the third, uh, the third argument to the pthread create uh, function is the uh, a, a pointer to the function that you want this new thread to execute. So when you create a new thread, you have to give it a piece of code that it can run and execute. And we do that by passing in a function. So we refer to a function that that thread will then execute the code inside of that function. We haven't created this function yet, but I'm gonna just name it here. It's gonna be called worker thread func. And then uh, in the fourth uh, argument and the last argument that we're gonna pass in is the uh, actually the input to this worker thread function. So if we have any arguments for this, uh, for this thread, we can actually pass them in in this fourth, uh, in this fourth parameter to the pthread create function. And it has to be passed in as a void pointer, okay? So this is going to be, in our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the thread ID uh, into our worker thread function. 
So what we want this worker thread function to do is basically just print out to the console, hello world, this is thread, and then print the ID of that specific thread. So it should print this value. So now that we uh, have this pthread create function uh, set up, let's go ahead and call the pthread exit function. And we're gonna pass in null as a parameter to the pthread exit. So the pthread exit uh, function basically forces this uh, main thread to wait until the thread that we create in, uh, in pthread create is finished with its work. So it will execute all of the code inside of worker thread function, and then this main thread will exit. But if we don't include this, what will happen is the main thread will exit too fast. It will exit before this worker thread function uh, can complete its work. And so nothing will be printed out to the console. And I'll show what that actually looks like later on, but for now, uh, we'll just keep this, uh, this invocation in the program. And the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna return uh, zero. <clears throat> and that will actually exit the, the program. Now that we have our main function set up, let's go ahead and implement our worker thread function. It's going to uh, have a void return type and it will take as input a void pointer, which will be the thread ID. And we have to cast that thread ID to uh, a long integer. So we're going to uh, create a new variable, <coughs> a long pointer, and we're going to uh, set that to the thread ID uh, argument. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and print out to the console, hello world, this is thread, and then we're going to use uh, a format, a string formatter to insert the thread ID. Alrighty. So now this program, when it runs, and let me just add a new line here so it's a little bit more readable. Uh, when this program runs, it will create a new thread, and then that thread is going to uh, take as input that thread's unique identifier, and it will print that out to the console. So let's go ahead and compile it and see if it runs. Uh, I'm just going to confirm that I'm in the right directory, and I am. So to compile the program, I'm just going to use uh, GCC and then mtexample.c. And when we compile a program that's using the pthreads library, we actually have to link it using the, the GCC option dash L pthread. Okay, so it won't work if, if we don't link pthreads uh, here. Okay, so it worked, but it did give me a warning. Uh, let me fix that warning. It's just complaining about what kind of, uh, oh, uh, let me just, forgot to dereference the, uh, the ID. So let's recompile. And now that generated an executable file, a.out. So I'm gonna call a.out here. And then it prints out to the console, hello world, this is thread. And then this is the unique identifier of the thread that we created. So that was simple enough to do, but uh, let's make it a little bit more complex. Let's actually create several, uh, several threads in our program. So we're gonna modify this and uh, convert this into a for loop and we'll create three threads and they'll all print to the console their unique identifiers. So the first thing that I have to do here is I have to declare uh, two more uh, thread ID variables. And then I'm going to uh, write a for loop here, we'll do int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, and then increment i. We'll place the pthread create function inside of here. Now, in order to uh, uh, provide each thread their respective uh, thread ID variable, what we'll need to do is put the addresses of these variables into uh, an array. So what I'll do is I'll create a pthread type uh, uh, pointer array. 
and it will be equal to the addresses of the thread IDs. All right. And then when we iterate over this for loop, what I'll do is I'll just simply refer to index i as the uh, <clears throat> as the uh, correct variable. Now when we run this program, uh, recompile it and run it, what we should see is three uh, print statements printed out of the console and then three unique thread IDs. So let's go ahead and recompile and, and see what we get. And so you can see here now each of these numbers is unique. So we created three threads and each one of those threads uh, printed out to the console their unique identifiers. So I mentioned that I would also uh, show you what happens if we were to not call pthread exit. So let's go ahead and remove pthread exit and just see what happens uh, and recompile here. So you can see the, the program immediately returns. And the reason for that is that the main thread that's running this main function here is immediately exit, exiting after it completes this for loop. So as soon as it completes this for loop, it's, go, it's returning and then the program exits. And so it doesn't wait for the, these, three pro, uh, these three P threads to complete their work and print to the console. So uh, that's why we need the, uh, the call to the P thread exit to ensure that the main program is gonna wait for these threads to complete their work before it actually exits. So let's go ahead and just recompile and run. So this is a pretty basic introduction to multi-threading and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for upcoming multi-threaded videos. Uh, in the next video, we're going to kind of uh, expand this program out a little bit more and we'll get to see the behavior of threads when they're accessing shared data. So uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching.